Hello everybody, I'm Aldous Hicks and I'm here to talk about recycling and how you and I have the power to change recycling for good. What do I know? I was a mechanical engineer and then a developer of small business software. About 27 years ago I was struggling with the data corruption problem in the office. Later that night when I was putting out my recycling and waste bins as you do, there staring me in the face was a used material corruption problem. You mix up different items all together at the beginning, whether it is data or used materials, then they are hellishly difficult to separate later on. In essence, the items immediately lose their value and become, well, a load of rubbish. A month or so later, I had written down a used material in and a valuable product out solution for my home recycling bin. Since my light bulb moment, I have spent part of my life working out how to implement the recycling solution. Together we can recycle most of what we use and so decrease the toll we humans are taking on our planet. Over the last 27 years, there have been many setbacks, many false storms, many tests of my resilience, hence this talk. But today, I'm very, very optimistic because I know we hold the power to change the recycling world for good, starting right in our kitchens. So, let me ask you if you recycle at home. Of course you do. Like so many of us, we all dutifully collect our recyclables. Perhaps you even wash them before placing them out on the street to be collected and recycled. You've done your bit. You have that nagging fear that much of your effort will go straight to landfill. What can you do? It's out of our control. I'm here to show while we can humans create waste, we also have the power to create a means of truly recycling our used materials. By harnessing skills and behaviours we already use in our homes. What behaviours? Well, let me ask you, what do you do with your clothes at night? My guess is you put them in the laundry basket. But would you then say you have done the washing? Likewise, when you clear away the dishes after a meal, does stacking them by the sink mean you have done the washing up? Both the laundry and the washing up require more than simply collecting our clothes and our dishes. So let me ask you again. When you put your used containers into your recycling bin, have you done the recycling? The answer is no. We have simply gathered these valuable materials together. But there are still many steps before we can say we have recycled them. So what happens to these containers and packaging items once we have dutifully collected them? We've all heard of the horror stories of mountains of recycling ending up in landfill or the oceans. But trying to nail down the figures as to just how much is actually recycled is no easy task. Most governments will proudly report their domestic recycling percentages. For example, from the UK statistics on waste in 2019, the UK claims 45%. Both Australia and the US claim lower percentage figures. These percentages sound OK, but drill down and you will see that figures are based on tonnages of the domestic waste stream collected or recovered for recycling not the amounts that are actually recycled. It gets more complicated. There's confusion about what recycling actually means. In many cases, recycling refers to downcycling, where, for example, a glass bottle ends up as road base, or a soft drink container becomes a garment or trainers. 
This is better than used material ending up or going straight to landfill. However, it is just kicking the can down the road. It achieves very little environmental benefit and it still requires sourcing the virgin raw materials to meet the ever-increasing demand for more and more packaging. Sadly, very little of what we diligently collect is closed loop recycled. That is when a used material can be remade into another product of similar value, for example, where there is plastic, where a plastic soft drink bottle is closed loop recycled back into another soft drink bottle. Please would you note two acronyms that I use in this talk for different plastics. The first one is uh, PET, which is this material here. The other one is HDPE, which is the plastic which makes up this container here. The American Chemistry Association said in a report in 2018 that the US PET, that's these guys, that the US PET recycling rate in the United States is 29%. However, in the US NAPCOR 2017 rate report, it said that the closed loop PET recycling rate is just 6%. Yes, you all heard correctly, just 6%. Note the difference, 29% recycled drops down to 6% closed loop recycled. So why is it so vital to closed loop recycle these beautiful materials? Turning this used clear glass bottle mean back to a new clear glass bottle means big savings in carbon emissions. Mining and raw materials extraction required for packaging emits a substantial amount of greenhouse gases. But closed loop recycling means the requirement for mining and extraction of raw materials is dramatically reduced. If we closed loop recycle these used materials, we can realise their true environmental and cash value. This cash value is the real incentive that will keep these used materials out of landfill and the oceans. So, unlike downcycling, which simply delays the inevitable trip to the tip. Closed loop recycling is both environmentally and financially beneficial, and it is self-sustaining. But what does this mean when it comes to the recycling we so carefully collect in our homes? We do not know the actual recycling percentage achieved for the used materials placed into our recycling bins. Whatever it is, it, a very much lower percentage is closed loop recycled. What we refer to as doing the, the recycling is actually just collecting these valuable materials turning, and turning most of them into waste. That is a shocking situation for a service we pay good money for, though how many of us actually know how much of our taxes go towards this failing system? Currently, domestic recycling services do not deliver. And that is a disaster for us and our planet. So why are we letting so many valuable materials go to waste? Because most materials collected by the current domestic recycling systems become mixed up and contaminated. Despite decades of research and development by many clever people the world over, and billions of our tax dollars spent on infrastructure and educating us, the most advanced domestic recycling systems in the Western world today, cannot cost effectively reduce contamination to levels low enough so that the recycled materials created sell for more than they cost. Sell for more than they cost. So long as we continue mixing these valuable materials together, it is simply not economically viable to separate them and to state otherwise is greenwash. How do we create a source of materials free of contaminants and pure enough to close loop recycle? Millions of households are already practicing the exact steps we need to take. For example, we use our washing machines to clean our clothes so we can reuse them 
over and over again. Clearly, we already harness technology to process our household items. So why not a domestic recycling appliance? Appliance that does the same for our used materials. A machine that keeps these valuable materials separate and pure. A machine that processes them so they are washed, dried, size reduced, and then stored neatly until they can be collected and used to create new items. What would a domestic recycling appliance look like? And how will it work? The domestic recycling appliance is in the middle. On the left hand side is a refrigerator and the right hand side is a dishwasher. When you want to load the recycling appliance, you simply open the drawer, place the container, close the door. The appliance will now sense a check that item. No confusion about whether or not that item is recyclable or not. If it is, it'll be returned to you and you can dispose of it in your rubbish bin. If it's recyclable, the appliance will then wash, dry, glass will be crushed, these guys here will be crushed, the metals here will be shredded and the plastics will be flaked. For example, when I take this bottle, this PET bottle has been flaked down to these. These are flakes which have come from an exact same replica bottle of that one. No education is required. There's no confusion. The used materials will be processed in separate streams to valuable products. Let me just take these again. This bottle has some value. These flakes have a lot of value. There will be seven separately stored products in one of seven containers. One each for PET plastics, that's these guys. One each for HDPE, three colours of glass, green, clear, brown, steel, and aluminium cans. This photograph is of the appliance product storage container in the prototype currently being de developed. Note the individual small containers. When one of those individual containers is full, you will pull out the storage container, wheel it to the agreed collection point outside your home. Just like you wheel your suitcase to a waiting taxi. A mobile app, think Uber, will alert a collection vehicle which will come and empty the storage container and weigh your products. Recording the reduction in environmental footprint you are accruing and in the future potentially rewarding you with cash for your efforts. The products will be delivered directly to the manufacturing plants for processing into new items. At home there will be big savings in time. No more putting out the recycling bin weekly or fortnightly, 50 times or 26 times a year. Instead, there will be between three and eight collections per year, depending on how quickly you in, fill up the individual containers. There'll be no smell, no mess, just a clean, tidy, hygienic and efficient storage place for all those used containers. The appliance will save the recycling hero in your house time and energy, or there might be heroes, and will make everyone in the house feel good. How soon will this technology be available in our homes? Our estimates suggest you'll be able to buy one in the US in the first quarter of 2023. How much will it cost? We think it's going to be between 3,500 and 4,000 US dollars. And that might sound a lot. But consider, when domestic recycling refrigerators first came onto the US market 100 years ago, in 1919, people paid the then equivalent price of an average new motor car, or over 11,000 US dollars in today's money for their first fridge. Just over 30 years later, nearly 90% of homes had refrigerators. Will you receive a cash return? Yes, but not initially. Additionally, the sensors in the appliance will process the return of cash deposits on qualifying used containers in those jurisdictions where governments have legislated bottle deposit return schemes. So, should we wait 
for governments or the recycling industry to help us produce such an appliance? Please ask yourself this. Do we need governments to help us purchase or use a washing machine or a dishwasher? We know what the answer is. No, we do not. Just like we take responsibility for washing and reusing our clothes, so we can take responsibility for recycling our used containers. This appliance will mean you and I can stop our used containers ending up in landfills or oceans. Together, we can change recycling for good. The future of recycling is simple. It's as simple as washing your clothes in a washing machine. Thank you very much indeed.